Okay, welcome to the seventh episode of the BPS podcast. Um, we're here to talk about the Carnu Rally with Simon. Um, would you like to give us a little bit about yourself, um, your background in cycling, and maybe your motivation to start bikepacking? Hey, yeah. Well, um, I guess I've always been cycling since I was a kid. Um, been like into a bit of like road, road and track mostly, and then um, just kind of all sorts like commuting. But um, yeah, kind of just I guess got interested um, when like Race the Rock was leaving Adelaide, um, like that very first one, like the 2016 one. Um, had a few mates heading out on it, and then um, thought I'd head out on a couple of trips of my own and kind of snowballed from there but um but yeah. yeah I guess this route um is sort of spiraled out of like the it's kind of based on the Mawson Trail um which I did a couple of years ago I sort of did it twice in one year um yeah. when Race the Rock was on as well and um yeah I guess there's just kind of more interesting stuff um a few gnarly bits that I've thrown in there just to make it a little bit more um, I guess like modern in terms of um, what bike backing routes have become because it's quite the Mawson Trail is quite an old route kind of. Based yeah, it around. seems to be a pretty traditional route. Yeah, it's kind of mostly just gravel, pretty chill, like nothing too crazy. So I thought I'd, I kind of knew there was some more hectic stuff around. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd make my own route and start it up as a bit of an event. So um, yeah, for second sure. year this year. So yeah, so with. Um... Coming back, going back to Race to the Rock, did you um, ride that uh, 2016 edition? No, not the 2016. Um, I did the 2021. Uh, oh, the sweet. same, similar route. Starting um, at Adelaide, was it? Yeah, left from just south of Adelaide, like 100k south of Adelaide. And then, yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, was that a, um, so like a, I guess, like an inspiration for the first, what, what was the first? Um, edition of your ride called it was the can't the remember exactly. could live a rally yeah yeah so um, was that like a bit of an inspiration i guess yeah in a way um i guess adelaide didn't really have like a its own event so i thought i'd i thought i'd create something um a yeah. bit like how melbourne's got its own event with the big divide perth's sure. got its own sort of monday Bitty ultra um i guess you've sort of done one out of brisbane it sounds like yeah we got bris divide and my ride and a few other ones actually so yeah. circling around but yeah that's awesome i've seen a few of the photos which i'll have to um include in the description or get them out somehow they look looks really good um so what would you say like the best bike would be to ride on this course because it obviously it's a bit more technical or rough than the mawson trail i'm guessing yeah um uh, i'd say you could it's probably a bit of variety says so i mean there's quite a lot of variety in the route there's quite a lot of I tried to sort of put in as much single track and mountain bike as possible, but then there's quite a lot of sort of connecting gravel roads, which aren't too crazy either. So I guess you'd have to weigh up um, what you're sort of going to prioritize in terms of comfort and speed. Um, so if you row, I mean, I probably wouldn't go much more than like a hard tail, hard tail with a suspension fork would be pretty good. Um, that'd probably be much more than that. You'd probably be over biking. Um, and then I probably would, if you're going to ride like a gravel bike, I'd probably run at least like a 40 mil tire. Um, a bit of extra be, comfort. Yeah. There's a few sort of definitely some steep descents and stuff, um, off the ranges and def and like, you know, fair share of single track. So you wouldn't want to go too, um, too narrow or, or lightweight with the tires. Is um, the terrain kind of loose out there? Like lots of loose rocks or is it more of a hard packed terrain? Um, I mean, like, yeah, as I was saying, it sort of varies quite a lot. So I guess towards Adelaide, it um, can be a bit more like clay through like the Barossa Valley and then out in the Flinders Ranges on the long route, it's quite rocky. Um, so, yeah, there's just, there's just like a lot of variety. Um, but, yeah, a fair bit of hard pack sort of in the middle, sort of um, yep. in the mid-north of South Australia, so... Yeah, and what bike will you be riding on this year on this year's edition? Um, well, last year I just rode my Curve Kevin um, mm -hmm. with like a twenty-seven-five wheel and like a two-point-one. Yeah, they're a nice bike. Uh, yeah, so that that worked quite well with some TT bars. Um, yeah, I guess it depends on your on your own preferences. Like a like a 
flat bar also did quite well on some of the more technical stuff. Um, yep. I was probably, I was definitely under biking through a couple of bits, but um, that's kind of just the only bike I had at the time. I've got a, I've got like a short travel dually now, which mm. would be okay, but it's probably just a little bit, um, a little, little bit, bit overkill. Overbiked. So, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, um, you've done a bit of preparation with this ride. So can you walk us through like some of the ideas, like how you link together some of the trails and what, um, I guess the motivation was behind that. Yeah. So I guess it is kind of loosely goes similar areas to the Mawson trail. Like the Mawson trail does go, it's, it's a great route. Like it goes through some, some awesome areas, like starts out through the Adelaide Hills, um, through like the Barossa Valley and like Clare Valleys. And then, um, heads out sort of west gets quite arid and then it comes back over to melrose which is like a bit of a mountain biking hub in south australia and then yep. um heads up and then i mean there's a short and a long route like the short route will just head over to port augusta um mm. at about 700 k's and then um the long route do an extra 400 k loop up through the flinders ranges um which pretty much from from north wilmington north it follows pretty much like the Mawson Trail. I don't really, I think that's quite a good um, route. I haven't changed any of that just because I think it's quite good. Um, and then it kind of just hooks back along a few dirt roads back to Port Augusta just for a slightly more convenient end point. Because the Mawson Trail finishes out in just like a little town with a bakery um, and the bus only sort of comes back once a week and it's quite expensive. So I thought it's just like a more convenient um, oh, for sure. way back through Port Augusta because it's just got a bus that leaves like twice a day and it's, 50 bucks or something so oh wow okay yeah yeah because um yeah me and a mate are hopefully going to come down and give it a crack and we're he, he'll be riding a jewelry so he might be over killing a bit um but you know be, be you, fast you, on the single track and there's there's a couple of like gnarly descents you <laughs> have yeah, a bit more yeah. fun on but um yeah 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 well i'll be on the opposite on the gravel bike so we'll be able to like weigh up what's like whether I've gone to, you know, under and then he's gone to over, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, just, I, this is something that I want to know. Maybe a few other riders might want to know is um, what do you think the recommended times for each route would be? So like, obviously it's going to vary a lot between each rider, but would you say for the thousand K you're looking more towards like eight, nine days. Um, and for the, the smaller route, what would you say um, time-wise, how long that's going to take for people you know, average fitness or someone like yourself? Um, yeah, so it yeah, depend on the weather a bit. Last year, so last year's route that I did um, was basically the short route for this year. Mm -hmm. um, and that took me about like 56 hours in some pretty bad weather. With, um, so last year, there's like a lot of clay um, and that death mud really stuck on the tires and stuff, which sure. slowed everyone down a lot. I'd say I was sort of, if it was good weather last year for that short route, I was looking at 48 hours. Yep. Um, and then I'd say for the longer one, you'd probably be looking at um, maybe double that. So maybe four, four days, it'd be quite a quick time. Four days. So yep. Yeah, four, 48, so two days for the short one and or maybe two and a bit days for the short one. And then four days for the long one would probably be like a good, good winning time yeah um, yeah for sure so you're yeah. sort of structuring it as like a race yeah i mean you can ride it how you want yeah um but yeah i'd say if someone's gonna um do it on pretty you know without stopping much and not much sleep you'd be looking at those sorts of times but um i'd say like a good touring pace for the short one you'd probably be maybe four or five days and then for the long one i'd say like seven to eight would be quite um quite a nice length of time. And there's like, I sort of structured a lot of it around a lot of the Heisen trail huts. Yeah. Yeah. So there's heaps of sure. good camping, um, you know, where like the Mawson trail might quite, might, might not quite go past a hut. I sort of rerouted a bit to get it a bit closer. So definitely I think an improved route and definitely good for touring as well. Not just trying to blast it. So. Yeah. And what would you um, say is like a highlight of the route? Would you say those huts would be one of the biggest highlights? Or if like yeah. someone had to, I guess, take in some aspect of the route, what would you say it would be? Yeah, definitely the huts are like a huge highlight. They're, they're really nice, um, quite well service and stuff. Like a lot of them will yeah. have a fireplace and table and chairs. Um, there's sort of one, like my favourite hut, which you can sort of head to from Adelaide on maybe like an 80K, 100K 
over NIDA, sort of 80, 100 K each way, which I go to a fair bit. Um, that's, that's on the route as well. Um, that's like a super nice hut, which would be good for like a first night. And then there's, there's heaps more out there that I've sort of strung together. Um, but then another really nice hut, uh, which is a bit of a detour. The hut, the route doesn't quite go past it. Just north of Hawker is a super nice like brick hut um, just on a dry creek. Um, so those two would definitely be highlights to try and camp in if you're going a bit slower. Um, but yeah, some of the, my probably favorite part is um, just heading out of Laura. Um, it's the route sort of heads up sort of the Southern Flinders Ranges and um, you sort of peak at the top of the, it's sort of hyper bike up to the top where there's this um, just a small shelter with a rainwater tank you can camp on and you get like a really good view over the Spencer Gulf. Um, so you're sort of right on the edge of the, the Flinders Ranges kind of looking over the, the, um, the crest of the hill, um, which has a super nice sunset. And then you sort of bomb down onto the, the plains just near Port Piri. Um, and you sort of head through the plains and then back over the ranges again. And I think that just gives like a really nice um, idea of the, the terrain and stuff. That's probably my favorite section. Yeah, yeah, well, I've, I've been riding in Adelaide maybe once with a guy down there and we, I think we did, I don't know, one, one of the local single tracks. Anyway, but it was, um, I'm really, like, I'm really excited to go and explore some new sort of territory on, you know, by bike. I haven't been down that way riding, like, that far out. Um, the Mawson Trail, we actually had planned as a trip um, in about, it was probably for about September, October period. Mm. um and yeah because i i caught you on instagram and i saw this and i'm thinking like hold on a second like why would we do the Morse trail when this is happening at the same time like it just it it fell in line i guess perfectly um, that's good yeah yeah well I've, i'll set a look and it looked like it went through a few mountain bike um areas like mountain bike sort of networks Did, does it go through many of those with a bit of single track yeah, so heading out of Adelaide, I've like um, I've, I've strung through a few sort of mountain bike parks. So the first sort of, I think like 150, 180k sort of goes through like a, like as much single track as I could fit in basically. Um, so you kind of head out of Adelaide um, and head out to like Fox Creek, um, which is like a, it's a mountain bike park they just put like a heap of money into because it, it all got burnt out in the bushfires in 2020. Yep. So they put like heaps of money into it to um revitalize it and there's some really good trails there now so it like heads through there first and then over to Kersbrook uh, mountain bike park and heads through there and then um over to Kaiser still as well which is like some sort of ghetto trails which are out near like the Brossa Valley which um some people are made not really authorized but <laughs> no. um and then it's sort of there's a few bits and pieces in between those parks that I've sort of found um which yeah, kind of kind of makes quite a single track sort of heavy first day, um, which uh, yeah, it's quite cool. And then also heading out um, into Melrose, there's um, that's like a bit of a certainly a cycling destination that people head to for camping, and um, people will stay there for like the whole weekend and just ride the trails there. So I've like added a few of those in as well. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun single track on that first day. I'm guessing. Yeah, first day is fair bit of single track um and then it just a, i mean after that it's like just a few bits and bobs apart from yep. melrose um yeah so yeah yeah awesome so um i guess moving on to like the towns and stuff that you pass through is it an overly remote course or are there sort of towns situated every you know 50 100 k's it's it's pretty well serviced um so the short route um is is pretty good there's not too many long stretches there's sort of one stretch um out from from Burrow to Hallett, I think it's about 80 Ks without any resupply. That bit gets quite remote. Like there's no phone service out that way or anything. Yep. Um, and then on the, that's, that's the most remote part for the short route. And there's a couple of water tanks at the huts out that way. Um, and then further out north, um, if you do the long route, that, that does get quite remote, especially the, um, the last sort of 200 Ks, there isn't any water or um, resupply at all um, that's super remote sort of past Wilpena Pound when you head out head out through Wilpena Pound and then loop around back to Port Augusta that's sort of um, you've got to be pretty well stocked in terms of food and water 
Um, I mean, there is a bailout. You can't bail out if you think you haven't brought enough and yep. hook, hook back into Hawker on the highway, but you'd just be adding sort of a 30K round trip to save yourself there. But um, yeah, certainly certainly does get a bit remote sort of further north. So um, Yeah, so it's all about that preparation, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd be packing a fair bit of water um, and then, yeah, sort of 200Ks of food. So, yep. so for weather in... Um around the October period in Adelaide, how, how is it looking? So for like interstate people, what would you recommend you'd be packing um, clothing wise? Yeah. I mean, it's um, sort of spring, spring and autumn are like a good time for the Mawson trail. If it's, if it's too wet, some of the, um, some of those roads get a bit claggy in the winter. Um, and then in summer it's just too hot, but um, sort of autumn and spring, it, it gets, it, you kind of it does vary quite a bit so you can you can get either way i'd say normally if you're camping out and stuff i'd be bringing in like uh you'd probably be getting down to maybe 10 overnight um maybe five if it's a cold sort of week um cold then, for us brisbane people <laughs> yeah it's gonna be it'd be cold for brisbane <laughs> it's got i mean it's pretty desert desert like out yep. north um so overnight it gets pretty fresh um and then um yeah, I would, I would say I'd be packing some, if you're camping out, I'd, be, I'd, I'd pack some warm clothes and um, you probably, and probably, yeah, probably zero to five degrees sleeping bag would be quite comfortable. Um, you probably, I would probably recommend if you're camping out, just probably not bringing the tent and trying to plan the route around the huts. Um, shouldn't be too hard to find a shelter every night uh, if you're going slowly, so... Yep. Um, yeah. yeah. And hopefully no rain. Yeah. Uh, it, it is not. pretty dry in South Australia. So you should, um, I'd probably bring like a, a rain jacket just in case, but um, yeah. So it was last up. year's edition, a fair bit of a, like a bit of a wet one I had. Yeah. I mean that one, I, we ran that in one in winter. Uh, that was sort of middle of winter, which um, yeah, it got, got wet. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah, it shouldn't. That's kind of why it's a bit later on this year, just so it, it's a bit more dry and um, a bit more comfortable. So, yeah. And how many riders did you get for last year's? Uh, um, I think it was just under ten started. Yeah. Um, so yeah, which was kind of quite good, seeing um, everyone was locked out of South Australia at the time. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so it's just just South Australians last year. So it's good. You're to hear expecting we, a few more this year, or? Yeah, I've got a few more people from obviously more interstate um, yep. sort of touch base and said they're pretty keen. So, um, yeah. yeah, it'd be good to get some more interstaters. So, oh, uh, yeah, well, you'll definitely be getting me and me and a friend down That's there. Good. So, that'll be awesome. Um, I'll just ask a few more questions. Just um, what would you say is like a bit of advice for anyone preparing for this event? Like, um, what would you say is your number one piece of advice? I'd probably say if you're doing like the long route, definitely planning out the water um, is definitely a big one. And um, I'd probably get pretty used to some, a few hiker bike sections and getting, getting a bit frustrated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, hiker biking is one of the, I guess it's a non-negotiable in a lot of bike packing races and yeah. events these days anyway. So it's. Yeah. Got to yeah. keep it interesting. So. Yeah, for sure. It's, um, it sucks when you're out there, but you always look back on it and you're like, wow, that was a really good, that was a really good memory. Yeah, definitely type two fun. So Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And um, I think that just about wraps everything up. Was there anything else that you were um, thinking about talking about with the Kanu Rally? Uh, I'd say just, yeah, I'll put up some, some, a uh, bit more info about it on the Instagram, it's just at Kanu Rally. Um, yep. There's like a bit of a Facebook event with all the info and stuff as well. I'll link that so. stuff down below as well. So yeah, if anyone is keen, um, feel free to like message me and um, yeah, it should be like a map progress page going up in the next sort of month or so, so people can can sign up and and yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for jumping on, and I hope this answered a few people's questions about Carno Rally. And um, if anyone else is interested, um, you'll see simon's instagram in the link below in the description so you can pop some questions through to him cool and Thanks for having me, man. Cool. yeah no worries thank you hope you have a good day cheers bye-bye